Hey everyone, it's Gavin Sy. I just got back from Wall Portrait Conference 2013 and I just wanted to take a couple minutes to go over a few highlights of, of how we can raise the bar and, and better make and sell, more importantly, our images. I, I always get inspired when I go to Wall Portrait. I mean, it's where you go if you want to start selling higher end pieces, putting them on people's walls. And I first went five years ago. Those of you that follow me know that I, I talk about it every year. And I, I go every year. I go to teach. I go to participate and to learn and to collaborate with students, with teachers and coaches. And, and it's, it's a really great time, but it's a time when, regardless of whether I've heard the concepts before, it really pushes me to go further, to get more inspired and, and to refine things further. And, and this year I plan to really do that in my portraiture. I've had a lot of different projects going a lot of different directions the past couple of years. And, and I haven't uh, gone away from portraiture, but I've, I've slackened off a little bit because I've had other stuff going on. And this year I really want to push forward into my own family portrait work and, and build that up and put more large pieces on, on walls, put furniture on people's walls. And with that, I just want to analyze a few things. There's no way I can cover a whole week long workshop in a few minutes. I mean, if, if you really want to sell wall portraits and take your business to a new level, check out Kim Whitmire's wall portrait conference, because it's, it's, it's where you go. It's been around for about 30 years. And a lot of the people that are out there speaking and, and really doing well, putting high end pieces on people's walls are, are past alumnus of, of wall portrait conference. I want to go over a few things just to kind of inspire us to push things further in terms of what helps us to sell better. What helps us to put wall portraits on people's walls? What is a wall portrait? When I say that, what I mean is it's not just a picture. Hey, here's a disc, here's an eight by 10. It's, it's planning, it's putting together an appropriately sized piece of art on somebody's wall. It's making furniture for the wall. And that's number one. Number one that I learned at, mine, at wall portrait the year I first went and years subsequent to that is that the mindset we have about our images is critical. No one cares what chisel Michelangelo used to make the David. It's about the finished result. It's about the art, the furniture, the quality. And I tell my clients flat out, I make furniture for walls. And that's exactly what I do because I push it further. I look at a piece and I say, all right, here's, here's a family and we're going to take a portrait, but how are we going to take it? We're not just going to walk to the park and click, 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 and here's a bunch of images. We're going to look at how we can slow down, refine, and make a spectacular piece for the wall that is an heirloom for them. And then we're going to produce it as if it's an heirloom, as if it's a piece of furniture. There's a reason I use uh, higher in canvas. I don't use inkjet canvas. I make a print myself, but then I send it to canvasmount.com and I send it down there and they canvas it for me and then I get it back so I can have that traditional canvas process. Kim Whitmire is actually a pioneer of the canvas wall portrait long before any of us kids were using digital. I mean, we're talking back to the 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond when they were refining this process using the McDonald canvas method. That's kind of another topic. The bottom line is I'm looking to make the very best quality product I can, make the very best image I can and sell it not as pictures, not as something that's, you know, here you go, it's a disc, or look, I took this with my cell phone, because that's mentally kind of what we associate the picture with. Everybody's making pictures. And I realize we're talking about word differences, but these can be important. You don't go into a furniture store and, and see, you know, this sloppiness in how they sell typically. A successful furniture store is gonna have a plan, they're gonna be upselling, you know, they're gonna have their leather and their presentation, and they're gonna have a plan to sell you on a quality product. And I think number one, where we go wrong as photographers marketing ourselves is we just think of ourselves as picture takers. You know, if, if you have a typewriter and, and you're typing something out, you're, you're a typist, a photographer, a typist. The typist is, is not the person that wrote the book. It's the person that types it out. We're not typists. We're the authors. We're making images. The camera is just a tool. So number one is how we think about our images. Once we get to that point, and Wall Portrait did that for me, it really helped me to understand and truly got me past this point of I'm not taking pictures. It got me past this point of, oh, I'm selling, you know, paper times 100%, you know, to make a profit on. If you go to a lawyer's office, you know, they're not going to charge you for a ream of paper plus 50%. They're going to charge you for the work that goes on to it. And that's why I don't make any issue of, of the look, you know, here's, here's this grade of paper and here's that grade of paper and, and I'm going to charge you more for this one and more for that one because I'm selling a piece of art. And yes, I'm going to use the best materials I can find, but I'm not selling a customer paper. I'm selling them my skills, my years of experience, my vision. 
for what I'm producing on that paper, be it a portrait, be it a pictorial, it doesn't matter. The principles of a wall portrait still apply. Number two, once we get to that feeling of we believe in our product and we know what we're selling and, and what we're presenting to people and, and here it is, you know, this is, this is what we're producing for you, is, is how we sell, how we communicate that to our client, what we show. You know, if, if you say, oh, I do wall portraits and they come in and there's 11 by 14s on your wall, they're going to buy what they see. They're going to buy what you sell and what they see that you believe in. See, I believe in the wall portrait wholeheartedly because I've gone back and I've studied Renaissance art. I've, I've looked at the classics. I've looked at Sargent and, and how they made these large wall pieces. You know, it was the norm to have this 80 inch print that was appropriately sized for the wall. Well, an 11 by 14 is too small for most people's walls. I almost never sell less than a 24 inch canvas from a portrait session because most people's walls, even in smaller homes, it shouldn't be any smaller than that. It's an inappropriate decor item. And what we're looking to do is to make an appropriate decor item. Now, excuse the phone there. I should have put that on vibrate, but I'm going to keep going here. What can we do to help build that? We understand that, but how does the client understand that? Well, the reality is that the client, when they see that we believe in it and that's what we show it's not very hard to convince them. And I see this all the time when people walk in the door, they get it. They see these fine pieces of furniture on walls and they get that concept. That's what I'm trying to convey. So I start that from the moment I pick up the phone. You know, I start that by making sure they come in for their consultation. You know, communication is essential. It's not, yeah, I'll meet you at the park at six. It's planning. It's what are you looking for? Where are we putting this in your home? What appropriate size works? It's oftentimes going out to their home, doing a go-see, looking, at what they need and, and planning with them. You know, sometimes it means handing them the tape measure and giving them the brains in and they hold it against their wall and they say, yeah, 50 inch is actually what we need there. These things start getting them thinking. It's not about shoving something down their throat they don't want. It's about us understanding how to sell and how to show them appropriate pieces for what not only we want to sell, but what's going to work good in their home. We're decorators for them. And so when these mindsets changed in me and how I sold portraits, everything changed. When I first went to wall portrait, I'm like, how am I going to go home and sell a 24 inch portrait for $600? And, and that's what I charge for a 24 inch on canvas today. You know, and, and I was still stuck in this mindset of I'm selling a piece of paper, but I'm not. And anymore, that doesn't seem like so much because I'm building them a piece of furniture is what I'm doing. When I go out and I, I plan this session and I, I make this fine print and I canvas it and, and we go through this whole process. So if I do a portrait session and, and I sell a, a $7,000 order, and that's about as high as I've gone on, on a family portrait, but there's people that teach at wall portrait every year who have gone much higher than that, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 in a single sale. So, so I'm a beginner in the sense of, of being a master of selling wall portraits, but I've been doing it long enough now to know that the concept works and that we can apply this to our business. That doesn't mean every person that walks through the door is going to be a $5,000 bill. But what it does mean is that we will consistently sell wall portraits. I do if, if I know how to sell them. When I, when I do a portrait session, and, and one of the things that I'm inspired this year, I always get inspired when I go to wall portrait. One of the things I'm going to focus on this year is, is doing more portraits. I've had a lot of projects and my fingers in a lot of fires. So I've kind of tapered off on, on the commissions and stuff I've been taking. And when I'm, when I'm doing commissions, I'm, I'm selling really well and the principles of the wall portrait is working. But partially, I, I'm talking about this to get myself fired up because I want to push myself this year to put more beautiful family portraits on walls, to make furniture in people's homes and to use that to further my business. So meeting with them, meeting with them afterwards, you know, that brings us to that sales session. What's the number one critical thing of a sales session? That's projecting. I see photographers all the time that you know, they kind of just put it online and let it go to the winds of, of the internet to get their sales. Well, that's not how you sell high-end products. That's not how you sell a high-end portrait to somebody. So the difference between, look, I put it online, order some prints here, or come and sit down with me and we're gonna go over your portraits and we're gonna look at what you want on your wall. We're gonna help you design your album. Going through that process. This is all about communicating with the client, about showing value, about showing what you have to offer. And you have to make sure you show and yes, invest in the samples of the product that you want. Sometimes I'll, I'll be making a sample print and it's costing me five, $600 to produce. And it's, and it's like, well, that's a lot of money. Well, yes, but that's how you sell a high-end product. You have to show to sell. These are, these are foundational principles of selling. And the problem is, is that we photographers oftentimes miss foundational principles of selling because we tend to be better artists than we are salesmen. And I'm not a used car salesman type of guy. But at the same time, I have learned to sell properly because I don't want to be selling people eight by tens and handing them discs. I want to be putting furniture on people's walls. 
I know I haven't covered that much. You know, we've talked about how we think of our images. We've talked about meeting with the client and, and building those expectations and showing them the value in a quality higher end product and helping to raise that bar. And we've talked about using projection and getting down with the client, putting those images on the wall and scaling them to size. These are all critical elements. And there's certain foundational things that if you ignore them, you do so at the cost of your own profit. And, and these little details, I mean, there's, there's so many things that go into really selling well. And, and there's certainly people who are good salesmen and good marketers that, that aren't applying all these exact principles of wall portraiture and, and they're doing well. But you know what? I would argue that most of those people, they're doing well because they're natural salesmen. If they really applied the principles that have been developed over decades and decades and decades and, and people figuring out how we can best sell art to put on people's walls. They could, they could go even further with that. So if you're a great marketer and you're not applying principles of, of building that value, of projecting, of, of selling better, well, you're really gonna do well once you really apply the proven principles. If you're struggling, you need to look at how you can raise the bar. You know, maybe you're, you're just selling pictures. Pictures are not rare pictures aren't really valued that much anymore. What can we sell that is valued? We can sell heirlooms to people. We can sell furniture. We can sell wall portraits. They're both photographs, but the difference is night and day. It's a difference in our mindset. It's a difference in our product. It's a difference in how we present it, how we sell it. It's a difference even in how we make the image in the first place understanding where it's gonna go in the home and, and what's gonna be appropriate there, what fits that particular person or couple or family. How can we make it sing? How can we make it a custom piece of art, of furniture that goes on their wall? I, I wish I could cover more here. Everybody really should come to Wall Portrait Conference. What I'm just trying to do today is to kinda, kinda get us excited about trying to do more, about trying to get past this click, 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 oh, here's an eight by 10, here's a disc, and, and see how we can raise the bar on how we make images, how we present images, how we sell images to make this more profitable. Photography has kind of become this menagerie of saturated people running around with cameras, but what's the goal? What matters to history and to art? And as portraitists, as pictorialists, I mean, what can we produce that really matters to people on a day-to-day -day level that they see when they walk into their living room that's the centerpiece of their home? What better piece to make a, a, a piece of fine furniture, a fine art of, than, than what a family has produced, you know, than the family, than the daughter at the wedding? I mean, how can we apply this and make it work better? I'm not trying to say that there's only one way that you can ever be profitable in photography, but I, I do truly believe that the wall portrait is the future of portraits and weddings and, and things like that because these mass volume of just okay images will continue to keep being made. The value has been brought lower and lower and lower on those. But putting furniture, making a piece of fine furnishings for someone's wall is a different story. Most people aren't doing that. Most people aren't promoting that. They're not selling that. They're not showing that. But the clients really value that. And the only reason they're not buying it is because we're not selling it to them. And I, and I know from experience that we can do better because the moment I went to wall portrait, and, and walked out of there and said, okay, I'm gonna apply these principles. Everything changed. You know, I, I was never the same photographer again, not only how I made and saw images, but in how I sold them and in the profitability of them. I sell wall portraits when I, when I do, a, do a, a commission now. I mean, that's my entire goal. Sometimes I'm, I'm so fanatical about that that uh, it's, it's kind of crazy to some people, but I know the value. I've seen how people appreciate that quality on their walls, and, and I think we can use that to raise the bar on all this stuff. So just a few thoughts, just a few things to kind of get you thinking and to get me thinking, because I'm gonna be going to work on this stuff even more this year and, and put it into practice and uh, do better at selling these things even than I have in the past. And, and more importantly, do more of them. I, I love making a beautiful portrait and I'm gonna be working on that. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna raise the bar? How can we get focused and, and think about what is it we really wanna sell and then sell that better?